If you want to be able to protect yourself from narcissistic people and avoid all the pain, drama, and trauma they bring to the table of their relationships, there are 13 harmful manipulation tactics commonly used by narcissists that you need to know about. And that's what I'm covering today. Let's dive in. Hi friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comments section below. And if you're back, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. So let's talk about 13 narcissistic tactics you need to know about. Number one, love bombing. Love bombing is what we often experience during the early stages of a toxic or otherwise abusive relationship. It occurs during the initial stage of the narcissistic abuse cycle, which goes as follows, idealize, devalue, and discard. Now the idealization phase being the first stage of this abuse cycle and love bombing is the specific manipulative tactic the narcissist uses during this initial phase. And this can happen in any relationship, by the way, not just romantic. It's the exact manipulative ploy the narcissist uses to not only make you feel special, but to hook you quickly. You'll know it's happening when you're experiencing excessive attention, admiration, and affection. And it's important to understand that this is no time to be flattered, mainly because the primary goal of this tactic is to cause you to feel emotionally dependent on, as well as obligated to, the narcissist as quickly as possible. Love bombing is what the narcissist uses to manipulate you with grandiose and intense demonstrations of attention and affection. And in doing so, the narcissist appeals to your insecurity and your fear of abandonment. In other words, any deficits you may have in terms of self-love and self-esteem. You can recognize this behavior early on when their interest in you is extreme. Their premature and so-called love will be incredibly intense and potentially intoxicating. So whatever you do, do not be flattered by any of this and do not get high on it. If it seems like too much too fast, it is. Understand that the purpose and intent of this behavior is to emotionally manipulate you and as a result override your critical thinking skills so that the narcissist can succeed in exploiting, dominating and controlling you. Basically, they'll do and say whatever it takes to hook you quickly, which if successful will result in your emotional state being dependent on the narcissist, which of course is exactly what they're after. And for those of you who have yet to do your inner child healing and recovery work, you are especially vulnerable in the face of this tactic. Being on the receiving end of this kind of intense flattery and attention can feel really good because of the boost in dopamine and endorphins we receive. You feel special, needed, loved, valuable, and worthy for now. And of course, we want to believe someone sees us this way, feels this way about us. But the reality is real, genuine, healthy love actually takes time to develop. So when faced with a narcissist love bombing you, whatever you do, don't get high, get real instead. Number two, gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation and abuse in which the perpetrator lies, denies, and invalidates your feelings, your experience, and your perception of reality. The narcissist will twist and spin information, minimize relationship crimes, and selectively omit large chunks of the truth in order to favor their own distorted narrative, as well as reinforce the perception that they're innocent and you're crazy. In addition, false information is presented with the intent to cause you to doubt yourself and question your own memory and perception of reality. The narcissist tries to suggest that any harm done was unintentional or that they did not do something that you both know full well they did. This is where the narcissist rewrites history to suit their own agenda and again reinforce the illusion that they're a stellar human and of course you're the issue. And the narcissist will go so far as to put on a look of complete surprise and indignation when attempting to gaslight you. The goal is to cause you to question your own judgment and possibly even your own sanity, as well as invalidate and discredit you in front of others. 
And when others are deceived by the narcissist's gaslighting tactics, you understandably feel powerless. This is why doing the work of healing and recovery is so important. When you do your work and your self-esteem is intact, no one can gaslight you and get away with it. After a lifetime of being gaslit, I can tell you this is a beautiful place to be. Number three, justification and rationalization. With narcissists, no matter what's gone on, what they've said and done or not done, there's always an excuse, a reason, a justification, a rationalization as to why they had to, could not, did or didn't do, whatever it is that's caused the problem. They are masters at justifying and making excuses for their own shitty behavior. They create false reasons or fake angles in an attempt to make their actions seem more understandable, acceptable, and appropriate through the use of a deceptive and manipulative spin. The goal of this manipulation tactic is to get you off their case so they can continue doing whatever they feel they're entitled to do while suggesting that you simply misunderstood or you don't know what you're talking about you're too inexperienced, or you simply do not understand the narcissist and all that they have to contend with. Please. Number four, crazy making conversation. How does this one work? The narcissist says or does something and then later denies ever saying or doing such things. And don't kid yourself. The goal here is to deliberately invalidate and discredit you as well as gaslight you. In other words, cause you to doubt your own sanity and your own perception of reality, as well as drive you slowly and systematically mad over multiple occurrences. And this type of circular, mind-bending, crazy-making conversation is something that shows up from the narcissist sooner rather than later. As long as they can hook your focus, they can siphon your vital life force energy and be entertained in the process. Total bonus for the narcissist. They use crazy making conversation to keep you spinning in circles, dancing like a puppet on strings, trying to explain and defend yourself while expending tremendous energy trying to get through to them and be heard and understood. Which brings me to the next tactic, number five, guilt tripping. The guilt trip is all about shaming, controlling, and diverting attention away from the issue at hand, their behavior, and the very real relationship crimes they've committed. Everything gets inverted. Reality gets twisted inside out and upside down. The guilt trip is the narcissist's way of playing the victim in order to get you to feel responsible for their bad behavior. When they can't succeed in manipulating, dominating, duping, gaslighting, or controlling you, they may even go so far as to say you're the one manipulating them. Or better yet, you're trying to manipulate someone's perception of them. They're attempting to flip your psychological reality on its head with this tactic by projecting their own dysfunctional behavior and toxicity onto you. And in some cases, the narcissist will use playing the victim through guilt tripping as a form of psychological terrorism and a means of holding you hostage to the relationship. If successful, it shifts any and all responsibility away from them and onto you. It appeals to your highly empathic nature and deep sense of care and compassion, which are then easily exploited by the narcissist thanks to the guilt trip. It's meant to shift your focus into giving them the attention they want while simultaneously putting yourself and your own needs aside. And that's not all they're gunning for. The bottom line is, it's all about maintaining dominance control and a false sense of superiority where you're concerned. Now comment below and tell me whether or not you've experienced any of these narcissistic manipulation tactics. And if so, what'd you do? How'd you handle it? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Number six, toxic shame. Narcissists use toxic shame in an attempt to shore up and stabilize their own faltering self-esteem. They do this by perceiving themselves as upright, admirable, or superior, and others who do not conform to their will are perceived as bad, wrong, inferior, and therefore contemptible. 
Shaming is a tool the narcissist uses to keep you feeling small, bad, wrong, and again, inferior. And this ensures that you will spend less time noticing their shortcomings and instead more time obsessing about whatever it is the narcissist deems to be wrong with you. And ironically, the easiest target for a narcissist is someone who has a genuine desire and actual ability to look at themselves, course correct, and work on self-improvement. And the truth is, we all have areas that we need to continue to work on and heal. And in that, I believe most people are coming from a good place. Empaths in particular tend to be drawn to the path of healing and ascending to a better and more conscious self one way or another. It's actually part of our nature as highly empathic human beings. Now that said, people with a destructive narcissist personality pattern are often quite clever and as such can quickly hone in on the aspects that you know you need to work on. When the narcissist feels that he or she is losing control, maybe you're asserting more independence or attempting to set healthy limits and boundaries, they will try to make you feel ashamed of yourself, your actions, your preferences, and legitimate wants, needs, and desires. If you hadn't done this or that, this or that wouldn't have happened. If you weren't so such and such, I wouldn't have to do all the awful things that I do. You should be ashamed of yourself. And once their toxic shame has a grip on you, you're easy prey for the narcissist. However, the opposite is also true. Once you've done your healing and recovery work, their shame bombing will have little to no effect on you you become impervious to their toxic shame. Why? Because you know who you are and nothing and no one can shake that. Number seven, domination and control. Narcissistic people are looking for total dominion over their chosen target in order to exploit them and all the good they carry for the narcissist's own benefit. They'll often try to control all aspects of your life whether the narcissist is your romantic partner, best friend, parent, sibling, mentor, or boss, it doesn't matter. This behavior may show up as controlling the money, dinner plans, how you raise your children, where you live, what you do for work, whether or not you work, what you wear, how you look, who you see, and when. The best thing you can do for yourself is tell the narcissist to take a hike, unless, of course, you like being controlled. And I'm guessing you don't. So your best bet is to cut the cord. Of course, this is often much easier said than done, and it can be particularly difficult if you have children with them, if they're your aging parent, your colleague, or your employer. But here's the thing, there is always a way out. And the way out begins with doing your own healing and recovery work, and finding a solid support system for yourself. None of us do this work alone. Number eight, triangulation and loyalty conflicts. Triangulation involves bringing in a third party or parties to assist in the criticizing, shaming, and blaming game. It's how the narcissist works to gather the troops, so to speak, and quite literally pit others against you. It could be a situation in which one family member or friend deliberately snubs you while simultaneously gossiping behind your back, or they're friendly to your face while systematically turning others against you through the use of toxic gossip and a character assassination. This can take many forms and there is usually a covert element which leads to pitting others against you without you being fully aware of what's actually going on. The goal is to isolate you while controlling the perceptions of the rest of the circle. They'll go out of their way to manufacture and maintain loyalty conflicts with their deceptive and distorted narrative, which is specifically intended to devalue and discredit you while also creating the illusion of bonding with their audience. This is a very effective psychological warfare tactic used by the destructive narcissist, and it only works if the rest of the circle are willing to participants in singling out and targeting the one person who happens to not be in the room. Interestingly enough, more often than not, said target will be the person the narcissist feels most threatened by. And those of us cast as the family scapegoat in sick family systems know all about this tactic because we've been on the receiving end of it countless times. Boils down to this, 
Narcissists are frightened, insecure egomaniacs who A, must have a target to project their disowned shadow onto, and B, cannot abide the possibility that someone else might have something good going for them, something good to offer, or God forbid, could potentially outshine the narcissist in any way, shape, or form. And they certainly can't stand the possibility that someone else might come along and be seen in a good light by their own little entourage. So they create loyalty conflicts, in particular with children since they're easily influenced, and then proceed to systematically undermine what could otherwise be good relationships by assassinating the target's character. And they'll do this behind your back, of course, narcissists being the sneaky, two-faced cowards that they are. And when there's natural consequences to this destructive behavior, like for example, the target sees clearly what's going on and either calls the narcissist and their enabling entourage out, or simply removes themselves from the toxic dynamic altogether, the narcissist will pretend to have no idea what the issue is. You know, because they're so innocent. If you've ever wondered just how fear-based, jealous, and insecure narcissistic people are, this behavior is all the evidence you'll ever need. Healthy people with healthy self-esteem don't play these games. But narcissists and their little entourage do all day long, like it's a full-time job. Number nine, emotional blackmail. Emotional blackmail is another favorite tactic and attempt at control for the narcissist. Unfortunately, it can be quite effective on empaths who have yet to discover their personal power. And here's why. The narcissist knows that their target wants the narcissist's love and approval. In fact, all human beings have a fundamental need for things like safety, security, love, validation, acceptance, and approval. And if you're not carrying enough of your own, the narcissist will play on this deficit. They might future fake and let you know that if only you're good enough, they might propose or give you that raise, that promotion, that accolade, and finally recognize and acknowledge your value. They'll go so far as to do things like withhold emotional support in order to keep you striving for their approval, while also questioning what it is that might be wrong with you. If you were good enough or more somehow, maybe they would give you the affection you crave or demonstrate appropriate levels of kindness, care, compassion, and concern. Instead, no matter what you do, how hard you try, or how well you do, they will be sure to find fault with you and continue withholding any form of support, emotional, psychological, or otherwise. You'll hear a lot of, if only you would have, or had you done it this way, they would have responded differently, helped you, or been more supportive, of course. In reality, there are no end to the ways they'll condescend and work to make you feel unworthy, less than, incompetent, and small. Either way, in the mind of the narcissist, they've got to keep you down and looking up to them for your sense of self. And the irony of all of this is the reason they're using these tactics to begin with is because they themselves have no sense of self and are manipulating you to get their hit of narcissistic supply. The more they see you destabilized and vying for their validation, affection, attention, and approval, the more satisfied they feel. Sick stuff. Number 10, passive aggression. This is emotional manipulation through things like the silent treatment, rolling their eyes, speaking about you as if you aren't present, or when you're just out of earshot, as well as deliberately overlooking or otherwise marginalizing you. Hurtful insults will be minimized and excused as the narcissist just trying to be helpful, offering advice or solutions. According to the narcissist, their insults and attacks are nothing more than a sincere attempt to help on their part. And you're just taking it to heart because, you know, you're too sensitive and of course, the problem. This can also be followed by more put downs and further disappointment from the narcissist and anyone else who they've convinced of your inferiority. The goal of this narcissistic tactic is to belittle, control, and demean you while covering up the appearance of wrongdoing on the narcissist's behalf. 
The silent treatment, for example, is when the narcissist refuses to communicate and uses emotional and or physical withdrawal as a means of punishing you. For what exactly? Who knows? But it is one of the narcissist's favorite tactics and they use it specifically to convey contempt and communicate that you're not worthy of their acknowledgement. The goal is to remind you of your place, lest you forget just how inferior you are in the narcissist's eyes, as well as to deliberately trigger feelings of rejection and abandonment within you. In my view, it's a prime example of just how cruel these empathy-impaired emotional manipulators and their spineless enablers can actually be. Number 11, deliberate sabotage. The narcissist deliberately manufactures such a state of fear, self-doubt, and stress in their chosen target that failure is almost certain. The reason this works so well for the narcissist is that the inevitable outcome can be used as ammunition to discredit, shame, and blame the target. This can be done overtly or covertly as the narcissist deliberately undermines a specific goal or objective that may otherwise have been achievable. The narcissist's intent may be to humiliate you, keep you preoccupied, so you are fully unable to accomplish what you've set out to do, or better yet, to simply wear you down and ultimately wear you out. Along with being a bully and playing the victim to circumstances they themselves create, the narcissist is prone to tactics that will sabotage your best efforts in every area of your life. They'll gleefully set you up for failure because they literally get a sick kick out of seeing their target stressed out and struggling. They will actually orchestrate situations to this end in the hopes of making you look incompetent in front of others. They'll then point the finger at you, sure to highlight all of your flaws and shortcomings with a smug look of satisfaction on their face. In addition, so insecure and green with envy are these people that they'll go out of their way to sabotage your relationship with others. Which brings me to my next point, number 12, lying. Including lies by omission. A lie is a false statement deliberately packaged and presented as the gospel truth. And as we know, narcissists are willing to say whatever it takes to get what they want, right? They lie outright, straight to your face, with shocking ease, as well as lie by omission by withholding the truth. The primary goal being to isolate you behind a wall of secrecy and deception in order to exploit the fact that you are unaware of vital facts and information that would cause you to choose differently and not in the narcissist's favor. So they manipulate and control you as well as others' perception of you by saying whatever it takes to keep everyone in place, dancing to the beat of their drum. Number 13, threats. Now what I'm referring to here is not so much threats of physical violence, although that certainly can be part and parcel of narcissistic abuse. Not always, but often enough for sure. Threats as a manipulation tactic, however, are usually more psychological in nature. One of the more common is the threat of social exclusion, which triggers any unresolved fear of abandonment we may still be carrying. This naturally speaks to our fundamental need to belong, whether that be to a family, a lover, a community, or a tribe of like-minded people. What narcissists don't realize is that threats are not effective in terms of actually changing minds but they are often very effective at changing how people behave in the narcissist's presence, at least in the short term. The goal is effectively taking control of your behavior, your choices, your thoughts, your speech, and possibly even your entire life. If done with aggression or violence, it can be a very effective tactic causing you to submit into an ongoing position of subordination with the narcissist, which of course is something the narcissist rather enjoys as it feeds their false sense of superiority and as we know, the narcissist desperately needs to feel and be seen as superior no matter who they harm in the process. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. But don't stop now. I have well over a hundred more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse and more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse so you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, and freedom.
And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become a client.